Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Better Tank a Dungeon series. This is going to be the introduction to the uh, concept of tanking in Final Fantasy XIV, something that a lot of people have some difficulty with because things are just not explained very well. I'm going to go over a few of the basics first. We're going to go in and we're going to show you the way that you would access active help. Active help is something that allows you to understand most of the basics of the game. You may remember it from when you saw your initial controls. That's navigation. There it is, your initial basic controls. Um, the disable all active help windows can be toggled on or off at any time through your character settings, but these will allow you to easily see how everything is actually laid out in the game for you, so if you have any basic problems, you can refer to these guides. Some topics, however, are not covered in active help, and that's mostly what I'm going to be covering here in this dungeon today. First, I would like, you, I would like to direct your attention over here to the icons on the left. The icon at the top, the number one icon, is always going to be yourself. This is going to be the character that you're currently playing in the party list. The remaining characters will be the other people who have been grouped up with you. You won't generally be grouped up with people until later on in the game, but I'm sure if you're here, then you're aware of that now. The icons at the top of the party list, the Strength, Dexterity, which is not lit up, Vitality, Intelligence, Mind, and Piety, which is not lit up, are the icons that are giving me a stat bonus to each of those stats. So my strength, when I am currently in a fight, is going to be a slightly higher number because I am currently in this fight with a monk at the same time, giving me this bonus. That helps me out in ways of grabbing aggro, primarily dealing extra damage to mobs. My vitality bonus that I have from being a tank is also transferred over to the other party members, so we'll see a slight hit point increase. What we're going to do is we're going to grab a group of these at a time. I'm going to grab the left group first, and then I will grab the right group. I will do so by using a signs marker, which you can grab from your actions and traits in main commands. You can scroll down until you find the marker for signs. It's that little tag right at the top, and I just click and drag it down to my hotbar on a, on a computer. Obviously, I already have signs there, so I don't need the second one. But the signs menu, if I left click it, will open up all of these wonderful communication tools. These tools are important to let somebody know what enemies you'll be attacking first, second, and third. By marking your enemies, Everybody else will be able to, to, to see these numbers as well. Anybody in your party, although those outside of your party uh, won't actually be able to see the same numbers that you are currently marking up. Uh, similarly, we can, uh, we can use a waymarks symbol using the same concept. Main commands, drive down to the bottom, grab the waymarks icon, and put it in my, and put it in my hotbar down here. Then I can use waymarks, and I can say, put a waymark down for waymark A, and a way mark down for way mark B. We can also use party chat, which is Alt P by default, or you can click the uh, little chat bubble icon and select party from the drop down menu. And we can type in We will kill A first in one, two, three, or and obviously, I think most people who are playing the game would understand that A comes before B. And I think most people who are playing the game are going to understand that that kill order. But we'll go ahead and tell people. And if we're using a party chat, it will appear in the chat for us right there. At this point, we're ready to pull. Everything has been marked. We have both areas marked just in case something goes terribly wrong. So I'm going to pull by walking into range of this enemy. You pull most obviously by walking it towards the front of the enemy and being spotted by sight. By entering the front cone of an enemy, the area directly where that enemy is looking, which would be the bottom of my screen for if it was my character as the enemy, then that's the most likely place where you'll get spotted. If you sneak around behind an enemy, you can frequently uh, walk past them without triggering aggro. The first person who triggers aggro will get a single aggro point on everybody involved. As a paladin, I will collect aggro on multiple enemies at a time with a skill called Flash. Flash, in its higher levels, will also act to blind enemies, but in its lower levels will grab aggro to a large degree to a large group all at the same time. We can use it multiple times in a row, and each use is just as effective as the previous one. 
We could also utilize a Fast Blade and Savage Blade combo. The Savage Blade, is its combo active, is activated by the use of Fast Blade. And it has an increased enmity effect where it deals approximately three times the standard aggro generation of just being a normal attack. Which means if somebody is attacking with, with, uh, with let's say, 50 damage, and I'm attacking with 50 damage using Savage Blade, I will generate three times as much hate for that enemy, therefore allowing that enemy to focus their attention on me rather than the squishier targets who don't have as much hit points as the rest of the party. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull now, and I will type that into party. I'll pi type that into party chat, and then I will pull the first group shortly after sending this message. Because I'm standing behind them, they didn't notice me initially. I will then pull the enemies back here. As long as they don't like me, as long as these symbols are uh, the square flashing uh, emblems, whoops, we accidentally grabbed the other group too. I will flash again and the other enemies will be added. As they're attacked, you will see that other people's bars will slightly increase. This is the aggro meter. This is how we determine who is holding the aggro of a specific enemy. It'll be a little more obvious on, this, on the last guy here because he's going to have more hit points, which are going to allow other people to generate even larger amounts of aggro. I'm actually even going to intentionally lose aggro on this next group in order to show you what the enemy list looks like when you've lost an aggro on a mob. The next group is right here, and they are very angry at me. I walked up in front of them, and I aggroed the front six enemies. When they get here... I'm going to attack using single target attacks. This is going to cause other enemies who are attacked to generate other icons. We don't want to leave them on the other guys too long, so let me get some of that aggro back. The gray icons, up arrow icons, and down arrow icons are all indicators that I do not quite have aggro on these enemies yet, and I will need to chase them down and pick them back up or use a ranged ability like Shield Love, which is not available to me in this particular run, in order to grab that aggro back. It unlocks from the Gladiator quest at level 15, or the Marauder class quest also at level 15, is a, is a move called Tomahawk that is functionally the same concept. We will now grab the Elder Gabu, the big enemy at the end, and I'm just going to hold him exactly where he is. I'll move him a little bit further out. I'm going to turn him around, by grabbing aggro so that other enemies, so that my other uh, allies don't have to worry about, uh, uh, don't have to worry about his ground marked attacks, like that big cone that we just saw. If I stop attacking for too long, then somebody else will pull the aggro based on these aggro bars on the left. But all of that is basically the fundamentals of tanking. That was the entire fight of the first guild hest. It's nothing too complicated, but since none of that is really explained in previous uh, active help files, as I previously showed in the system active help folder, those are fundamental pieces of the puzzle that allow you to continue tanking in harder, longer, more difficult encounters using party management. Thanks for tuning in to the first episode of Better Tank a Dungeon, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Thank you.